Alimony is often an issue in divorce when one spouse has financially supported the other during the marriage. As a general rule, before the court can award alimony, a spouse must prove that he or she is a dependent spouse, that the other party is a supporting spouse, and then an award of alimony is appropriate after considering other relevant factors, including economic factors, and in some cases, marital misconduct. There is no legally mandated formula that the court is required to use when determining the amount or duration of the alimony award. Once the court determines a party is entitled to alimony, the court has discretion in determining how much, how long, and in what manner it must be paid. In North Carolina, if a party has engaged in illicit sexual behavior, such as adultery or other sexual acts with a third party during the marriage and prior to the date of separation, it can impact the outcome of alimony. First, if the court finds that the spouse seeking alimony engaged in this behavior, the court must deny the alimony claim. On the other hand, if the court finds that the supporting spouse committed adultery, then the court is required to award alimony. However, in this instance, the amount and duration of the award remains in the discretion of the judge. If the court finds that both parties engaged in such behavior, then the court has discretion as to whether and in what amount alimony should be paid. The court may also consider other types of marital misconduct in alimony cases, such as abandonment, verbal abuse, and physical abuse. However, the court is not required to award or deny alimony in cases where the marital misconduct complained of does not include illicit sexual behavior. Sometimes the question of whether one party has condoned the other party's fault becomes an issue. Condemnation occurs when a spouse learns about the other's illicit sexual behavior, forgives it, and resumes marital relations. Once it is condoned, the court cannot consider the misconduct when determining alimony unless the same conduct is subsequently repeated prior to the date of separation. Whether the misconduct has been condoned depends on the particular facts of each case.